My name is John Penley. I'm a longtime political activist as well as a photojournalist. I spent a year in prison for demonstrating against nuclear weapons at the Savannah River bomb plants where they make the plutonium for U.S. nuclear weapons. I was also arrested twice more for blocking the state highway into the plant and have spent more time in jail for protesting at that plant than anybody else on the planet. I have a photo archive in Tamama Library at NYU of about 30,000 images I took in New York City, in Mexico. I infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan and photographed them in Tennessee, I covered the war in Nicaragua, was down in Mexico with the Zapatistas. Recently, I've organized a number of things related to Occupy Wall Street in New York. One was a drum circle protest at Mayor Bloomberg's house. The other was a protest about the targeting and arrest of press at OWS demonstrations. I organized, along with Iman Abdul Baki, the Muslim prayer service at uh, Zuccotti Park. And I was instrumental in putting together the Veterans Day concert with Joan Baez. One newspaper called me New York's cuddliest anarchist. Yeah, right. I helped Clark make the WikiLeaks truck. Oh, look at that. There it is. Top secret. Yeah, you'd never know. And I was with Clark when he got arrested for driving it around the White House about three hours later. Release Bradley Manning. We really went down there for a protest at Quantico Marine Base over the treatment of Bradley Manning. It caused the U.S. government to move Bradley Manning out of his torturous, naked, uh, solitary confinement conditions to Fort Leavenworth Military Prison, where his conditions improved. Uh, recently, I went to Fort Meade and was one of the speakers at the protest that began because of the pretrial hearings for Bradley Manning. Something else I have in common with Bradley Manning is that I had a top secret clearance when I was in the Navy. And I was stationed in Greece during the Papadopoulos military dictatorship there. And I saw what the real deal about America and freedom and democracy uh, spreading that worldwide. They just don't care about it. You, you can be the most brutal dictator in the world as long as you let them put their military bases there and doing business with American corporations. They'll send you weapons and money and pat you on the back. So I saw a lot of message traffic coming through there about what Papadopoulos and the generals were doing to people. They were brutal. They were torturing people. They were killing them. They were, you know, it was like a typical standard military dictatorship. And honestly, I should have released that information. If there had been a WikiLeaks back then, I would have been sorely tempted to do it. It bothered me a lot, the stuff, not only that I saw in the message traffic, but just what I saw personally on the ground there. Yeah, I remember your speech. I should have said something. Yeah. He, he did. Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, honestly, I violated international law. I covered up war crimes by not saying anything. But at that point... I wasn't uh, uh, mentally uh, sophisticated enough to even know that much about international law. I learned a lot about it from a former radical Catholic priest named Philip Berrigan. My basic take on the situation is, is that under international law, it's a soldier's duty not to cover up war crimes. That if you do that, you're part of the crime. Out of the whole chain of command that Bradley Manning was part of, He's the only one that exposed the war crime, uh, specifically the helicopter shooting down unarmed journalists in Baghdad, which was one of the first things that came out of that leak. And everyone else that didn't leak it out is guilty of war crimes, and they should be prosecuted for it. Only Bradley Manning is the only one that shouldn't be, and unfortunately for him, it looks like he's going to be doing a life sentence. You know, something um, not so good for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks is that evidence was presented by the government at this hearing for Bradley Manning that they claim links Manning and Assange to conversations that had taken place before the leak happened, which uh, legally, if they can prove that, then they're going to have a case for conspiracy to commit espionage. And that's where it's going. I strongly suspect that if and when Assange gets extradited out of Britain, the U.S. is going to issue an international arrest warrant for him and try to have him extradited to the United States. And most likely that will happen because most of the countries in Europe do have 
extradition treaties with the U.S. It's pretty routine. It's hard to fight an extradition in most countries with the U.S. Um, you know, I'll, personally, if it was me, I, if I was Julian Assange, I would be trying to get on a boat and get the hell out of there and get somewhere and go into hiding right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm not suggesting he do that because I'd probably be breaking the law if I made a suggestion like that. But I'm just saying, if that was me, that's what the hell I would be doing. I would not be sticking around to let the U.S. grab me, bring me into the United States, and put me on trial. I wouldn't be doing that. I would be on the run. And that's why I have been on the run before. I was a federal fugitive for three years. So, you know, I did run before. My philosophy is don't let them get you if you can in any way keep that from happening. And... um He's got the bracelet around his ankle. Well, hey, man, I've heard of those bracelets being cut off and people running a whole bunch of times, you know. So supposing he does get extradited to the U.S., what do you think his chances are? Well, you know, for one thing, he's going to be tied up here and they're probably going to set an extremely high bail on him. Uh, he probably could make bail, but then he would be under the same conditions he's in in Britain. He would be held here. Um, he would be under supervision. He would have a bracelet on. Uh, even if, and they might not even give him bail. They might declare he's a, such a high risk uh, for a flight that they um, they wouldn't give him bail. Um, you know, federal court cases can go on for a long time, even before they go to trial. I would say at least two years he or more he would be held here before the trial even got started. Most likely, I think, in a courtroom in federal court in the United States, he would be convicted because it's hard to get a fair trial, especially on a conspiracy charge in the United States federal courts, because the judges decide which evidence the jury can hear. It's very structured. It's very tilted toward the government. Uh, you know, I've had a federal trial that for tr uh, trespassing at the Savannah River plutonium bomb plant, and I, and I know exactly, you know, I mean, I had a guy who was the former head of waste disposal for the whole plant who quit because of the dangerous conditions that they were disposing nuclear waste in there, tried to come and testify at the trial. The judge put the jury out of the courtroom, heard his testimony, decided it wasn't relevant to the charges of trespassing and didn't let the jury hear his testimony. That's what happens in federal court. Julian Assange, I bet you a million dollars to a dollar, would be convicted and probably would get a life sentence and be somewhere in a supermax prison in an isolation cell for the rest of his life. For I mean, I, I'm just being honest. That's what I think would happen if they get yeah. him into the United States. So what do you think about his statute as a journalist? Will that be taken into consideration? No, they don't care, man. They want to neutralize him. They don't consider him a journalist. They consider him an enemy of the state, of the, of the American government. You know, the last thing that they would be willing to say is that Julian Assange is a journalist. They're, they're going to say he's a uh, criminal. He's um, an international criminal. They have said that. He's before. won three journalism awards of late. Well, you know something. One of them is a U.S. military one. Yeah, you know something? They don't really care about that. If you think uh, Julian Assange is going to get, or Bradley Manning for that matter, is going to get anything what you might call justice in this country, you can forget about it. Yeah. There ain't no such thing as justice in this country. It's just us. America <laughs> just says like, hey, if it's international law that goes in the way they want it to go, they're all for it. But if it goes against American interest, they just ignore it. International law is the law of military force. You got the military to enforce your law. That's what international law is. You know, if you got like a fleet of aircraft carriers, submarines, airplanes, drones, and lots of troops, you can create international law any way you want it to be because if, you, if people don't go along with what you want, you'll go over and kill them. Look, the rule of law, habeas corpus, all the things that are in the Constitution in this country, they're all being broken down and done away with. They're, they're, they're little by little using what they call terrorism to get rid of rights that people consider to be fundamental rights in the United States. Obama just signed a detention without trial, without charge, without anything new law. It's scary. Not only is it a soldier's duty under international law, but it's a citizen's duty to do something physically to stop war crimes.